Ladies and gentlemen, President Trump has set another record, a fundraising record that far surpasses Biden. Gee, I wonder why. Maybe because Biden is a placeholder and they have no intention of giving Biden money. Maybe because Hillary Clinton is the um, person with access, let's just call it that, the person with access to a whole lot of money for the Democratic Party. But we know that Clinton's going to be nominee. And the only person who has stated this since 2017, and the only person who has stated Clinton will become nominee, it will be the biggest political call of all time. I can't believe, I can't believe with the evidence we have that nobody's giving Biden money, that President Trump has well over, what, $220 million more, more than uh, uh, in terms of fundraising than Biden, that nobody understands what's going on. But ladies and gentlemen, I'll read you this. Trump March fundraising hits, hits record. Um, let's just read it. $63 million, the March Hall uh, for Trump's re-election effort was down 27%. Still Trump victory, Trump, uh, Trump victory and Trump make America great again. Brought in $136 million in the first quarter. Trump's re-election effort, and this is the record, ended, ended the quarter with $240 million dollars cash on hand 240 million dollars want to know what the placeholder biden is the guy who just had a criminal complaint nobody has ever filed a criminal complaint for assault against president trump nobody that hot mic wasn't a deposition disgruntled maniacal rabid frothing at the mouth pathetic imbeciles who think that the hot mic is is actually worse than somebody who is accused of actually doing that. Biden, they're not going to go into they're not going to go into the convention, the centennial of the 19th amendment with Biden. They're going to it might be uh, Warren and Clinton Clinton will be uh, nominee and they might she might pick Warren or Biden might pick Warren for Clinton whatever. But the point is this, the whole thing's a charade. Why? That far outstrips the $26.2 million that Democratic National Committee and Biden had at the end of February. Clinton had exponentially more than this. Well, Clinton had a lot more than this, okay, at this point in the election. She had, she had raised hundreds of millions of dollars. But I don't know if she had a quarter. Trump re-election ended the quarter with $240 million in cash on hand. Wow. So, I mean, she might not have had $240 million, but she had close to $240 million, and she ended with $1.2 billion. Biden ain't going to get $1.2 billion. Let's just say hypothetically, which he's not going to be. He was the nominee. He has $26 million. That's with the Democratic National Committee. That's not just Biden's campaign. That's the DNC and Biden's campaign. So, the Republican National Committee, you're talking about a, lot, a whole lot more than $26 million. But here, that far outstrips the $26.2 million that the Democratic National Committee and Biden had at the end of February. $240 million to $26 million. You think they're going to roll with Biden? He can't even get past $30 million, which is, which is a, like, it was like just one quarter for Clinton last year in 2016. She would, she would make something like 20 to $30 million a quarter with all her super PACs. And then she got all that money to, right before the election. But Democrat, the Democrats will report the first quarter totals. Okay, so... In the, first three, in the first three months of the year, Trump victory, which courts wealthy donors at events attended by the president and his top circuits, took in $64 million, significantly more than the $31 million it raised previous quarter. So, you have it right here, ladies and gentlemen. There's not really... And there was a New York Times article, yet again another negative story on Biden, about how he's losing the online... If you go to like Joe Biden's YouTube page, he has one segment like three days ago stuck at 20,000 views... If you're running for president, I mean, at least with Bernie Sanders, he was a social media machine. Biden has no 
social media presence. I don't have Twitter, by the way. I don't have Facebook. Anyone impersonating me on Twitter is breaking the law. But anyway, and I explained that on H.A. Goodman's other channel. I have people who are obsessed with me, and so they're pretending to be me on Twitter. Um, but anyway, $240 million to $27 million. Okay, to 26, sorry. $240 million in cash on hand to $26.2 million. Does this make sense? Just if you don't, if you think that, oh my God, here we go. You know, we have to hear you again. We have to hear you again with, with, with Clinton being nominee. It's about money. Leverage, political influence is about money. Political power is about money. President Trump was the first president to step foot in North Korea, to begin detente between North and South Korea. More has to take place, of course, but he got the road. He, he, he started both North Korea. He helped start, along with Moon Jae-in of South Korea, who deserves the Nobel Peace Prize, along with President Trump. Moon Jae-in of South Korea just recently, a couple months back, said that he envisions a joint Olympic team between North and South Korea. When the Olympics... Um, we're like twenty in the twenty in the twenty thirty twenty thirty two Olympics, I think. This is a huge thing. President Trump is actually his foreign policy achievements are 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 greater achievements than anything President Obama has done. His President Obama's biggest uh, catastrophe in terms of a failed NATO intervention that actually obliterated a country is worse than anything President Trump has done. So you get these people. Look, you have to understand something. I'm going I'm to tell you. I'm going to give this public service announcement. Literally every every segment. Do not ever discuss or uh, or debate or argue or even think of having a conversation with somebody who doesn't like Trump. Don't do it. I'm telling you, don't talk to family members. Let them let them say anything they want about Trump or Trump supporters. Don't even, don't do it. It's not worth it. I know you might say, some people might say, well, AJ, you know, I'm going to defend myself. No way, I'm not going to let anybody. It's not worth it. It's not worth it because at the end of the day, uh, there are family members, there are friends, there are coworkers, there are people at, you know, restaurants when they open up again. They can't handle, they can't, they, they view President Trump View, through the lenses of the caricature, the monstrous, the, monst the monstrosity created by media. They don't view President Trump as the president who ended America's longest running conflict just recently with a peace deal that nobody's talking about. He ended, he ended the horrific, he is, he has started the, the, the ball rolling on ending America's longest-running military conflict in Afghanistan. He ended this. We would have stayed there forever if it's, if it's Clinton, if Clinton were nominee or were president. President Trump has done great things from a macro view, from a, and just in, in, from a bird's-eye view, he's done some really great things. Got us out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership immediately. Got us out of NAFTA. USMCA, a lot better than NAFTA. Signed prison reform legislation. That's why he's getting $240 million in cash. It's not just, look, look. President Trump, you've seen, we've seen what he's been able to accomplish. And the average American is just, not only just fine with it, the average American see, says, okay, he's not the, the, um, the villain that he's painted out to be. So, I mean, getting back to don't ever argue with a family member or a friend or a coworker or a spouse about Trump. They can't handle the truth. And the meltdown when Trump wins, it's going to be Clinton versus Trump again. And I'm telling you, when it happens, when Clinton somehow, some way, I don't know, look, I don't know how, Maybe uh, Biden will, you know, be like, hey, so come on now, people, now you know the deal. I'm taking off my clothes, jumping into the reflecting pool, taking a skinny dip. What's the matter with the skinny dip? Come on, you know the deal. You love the skinny dip like me, lotion on the leg hair. Come on now. Smell on you, brother. Who knows what'll happen? Who knows what could happen? I don't know. 
They said, well, I don't see a path. I don't see how Clinton... Who, who, who cares? Who cares how it happens? Yeah, I didn't... Did you know that Bernie would endorse Biden? Did you know that uh, Mayor Pete would win Iowa? Because... And then an app in Iowa didn't would would, would not... Would suddenly give the... Would I give Iowa to, to Mayor Pete? Even though Bernie won the popular vote. And um, there was an, the, the app, the little wonderful app that they used is was linked to Clinton uh, campaign officials. The whole thing, Hillary Clinton met with each one of these people, Mayor Pete, Kamala Harris, Biden, Clay Klobuchar. Why did, why? To get, um, why did they meet with Madam Secretary? To get, inf- to get advice on how to type an email, to how to delete emails, how to use private servers with top secret intel? For what purpose do you think? Gee, maybe, do you think maybe it was to coordinate in some way this charade and farce of a Democratic primary, when Clinton becomes nominee, do not believe, well, nobody could have predicted this. I'm predicting, and I have been predicting, that Clinton's going to be nominee. And I have literally been saying, I don't know how it's going to happen. I never called individual. I never said, oh, she'll win Iowa. I never called states. I never called individual primaries. Because I don't care. Because the nomination process is two rounds. The first round... Biden's delegates aren't even uh, bound to vote. They're not legally bound to vote for Biden. Okay, they're not legally bound to vote for Biden. Did you know this? 538's talk, talked about this. Actually, I believe I have it in the description section. They're not legally bound to vote for Biden in the first, um, in the first round. The second round is all superdelegates. The... the Democratic Party works on a system of patronage, graft. There's a hierarchy system. The longer you've been there, the more clout you have. Nobody's been there longer in terms of the immense influence than both Clintons. They run the Democratic Party. I find it very amusing when they say, when people say, "Why, well, gosh, you know, the Democrats don't, lo- don't want the Clintons. There is no Democrats. There is no the Democrats. There is no Democratic Party. It doesn't exist. There, that's why when when you heard when you read the, the Donna Brazil article um, that the Clinton the, the DNC had a secret agreement with Clinton's campaign, there is no Democratic Party. If there was a party, you wouldn't have a secret agreement. You wouldn't have corrupt intelligence officials saying, "Oh, you know, Clinton has to win a million to zero. Does that mean that they got marching orders from Clinton? No. But it's a team where everyone's on that team if you're on the establishment, even the Bush era people like Max Boot and Bill Kristol and other neoconservatives nobody knows like Robert Kagan. People don't know. There are liberals who are like, how could you vote for Trump? And then you explain, well, President Trump is reversing U.S. foreign policy, failed U.S. foreign policy. And uh, the the doctrine of never-ending war and conflict and, and, and constant intervention and constant never-ending counterinsurgency uh, endeavors, this is far more important than any policy championed by Democrats today. The moral, the biggest moral dilemma we face is leaving our soldiers away from their families forever in places where they don't want us in places where they have to contend and battle IEDs. That is the biggest moral dilemma, the moral conundrum, the moral problem we face. And we we had to address that, and President Trump is addressing that. And when you tell disgruntled disgruntled maniac liberals, they're like, they don't even like, you tell them this, like, and then they they ignore it. They either either don't understand it or they ignore it, and they go back to the, the, the hot mic. Which is which leads directly to the criminal complaint against Biden. They don't. Un, they think, they think that their value system, which they don't actually, it's based on hypocrisy. They think that you know their view of the world is the only view of the world anyone should have. And Trump represents the antithesis of that view. So if you vote for President Trump, you are then disregarding everything good and pure in life. They've really convinced themselves of this. And they have no regard. Like, for example, that's just one one issue, okay? We can go on forever. There's a million reasons to vote for President Trump. 
the $240 million compared to the $26.2 million, just, I mean, there's no way Biden can compete when he has $26 million in cash on hand. That far outstrips the $26.2 million that the Democratic National Committee and Biden had at the end of February. They do not have money right now to compete with Biden. Nobody is giving Biden money because there's nothing... Are you going to get... If, if there was the USS Biden, are you going to get on that boat? You, you think that boat's going to take you to where you want to go, that ship? Okay? Forget an iceberg. If it hits like a little like... um. Like if a seal bumps into it, the whole thing will tank, and, you know, and, and just so, so there's no, there is no USS Biden going into the nomination. They're going to find some way, an ingenious way, or maybe it's, ah, coach, my ACL, hurt my ACL. Who knows what? It's going to be Clinton. And I, this, this, this is the reason why, one of the reasons why is that, um, one of the reasons why is when you compare the money, $240 million to $26.2 million, you're not looking at something that's, fe- you're not looking at a serious, like the Democratic primary, there is no Democratic primary. They're not going with Biden who has $26.2 million. Clinton had a lot closer to $240 million at this point, Okay. They're not going to go with somebody who has $26.2 million. First of all, he has no online presence. That's, that's another important issue. The New York Times just wrote about that. He has zero online presence. And he, he was losing money even before he wrapped up the nomination. Like when he first started, Biden was losing money. And Bernie was out, out raising him. Bernie probably has more money in total than Biden, but that, that most of it's going to go back to the Democratic Party. Congrats, people. Oh, i got a f- small favor to ask of you. Can you give one dollar for Medicare for all? Because I'm going to give that dollar to Biden. He'll give it to Clinton. You know, it's a big racket I'm a part of. Uh, and then you get this nonsense. I go on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. I don't have a Twitter profile, but you don't need one to go on Twitter to see what people are saying. And you see, you see like, well, you know, Bernie had to do this. He's, he, he's fighting for us in a different way. You know, he had to, um, he had to you know, play ball with the DNC. And no, he doesn't. He can go to the Green Party tomorrow, take hundreds of thousands, if not millions of voters with him, and Democrats will never win again until they, the, the, he'll have Democrats by the you-know-what. He simply says, I'm going to the Green Party, and guess what? I'll come back when you pass Medicare for All in the House. There you go. There you go. Democrats would pass a Medicare for All bill in like a, a month, knowing that it would get um, blocked by the Senate. But at least they would at least they would get to that that point because it's political leverage. Bernie would have engaged in like the most brilliant political maneuvering. But see, he doesn't he likes Bernie Sanders is maybe a good human being, who knows? I think he's probably a good human being at this point. I was I was the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post. I was the unofficial scribe of Sanders' most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post. I didn't vote for Clinton when it wasn't... I voted. I, I said I wouldn't vote for Clinton when it wasn't popular to do so. Now everyone's saying, oh, yeah, no, I'm not voting for Biden. I'm like, oh, well, you know, where were you when people like me... I know that Jimmy Dore said the same thing on Twitter. He's right. Jimmy Dore didn't vote for Clinton. He was 100% right. I have a lot of respect for Jimmy Dore. Okay, I didn't vote for Clinton... I got hit pieces written, and my my writing hundred articles in the Hill, the Huffington Post, Salon, and other other publications that went viral because people understood there's a clear line between Bernie Sanders and Clinton. Just like there's more overlap between Trump and Bernie than Biden and Bernie. No Trans-Pacific Partnership, no NAFTA, prison reform legislation. One would think Bernie was happy that we ended. The longest running military intervention because of President Trump. One would think Bernie is happy that President Trump was the first president to step foot in North Korea to begin detente between North and South Korea. But you can't expect people who are who are like have this like infatuation with social media and whatever uh, MSNBC and CNN say about Trump. You can't expect people to understand this. He's a good president. Trump's a good president. Oh, you want to you want to blame him for the crisis? Okay, on March first, 
Andrew Cuomo was saying there's no reason for undue anxiety. There's no reason for undue anxiety. And the risk remains low in New York. Now you have 10, over 10,000 people have lost their lives. So how is that Trump's fault? The governors of each state messed up their own responses. Then they say, well, you can't. The, he, Trump says he has ultimate authority. And he's, he's, he's usurping the, the, the authority of the governors. Well, then it's the governor's fault initially then. It was the governors who were supposed to decide how many, how many masks and ventilators they needed. And they were completely blindsided by all of it. Then, because they were trying to impeach, the Democrats were trying to impeach Trump, and then they went from impeaching Trump under the absurd notion that he was trying to withhold hold military assistance to go after Biden. If Biden were the nominee, he wouldn't even get the popular vote. How do you, how do you get the popular vote if you have zero online presence? I don't think that like Facebook ads swung the election because nobody sees an ad and says, oh, I'm going to vote for the other person. It just reinforces existing uh, voting preferences. That's it. Or it reminds people who already want a certain uh, candidate. There is no, oh, gosh, you know, gosh, you know, I'm just going to vote for Cl uh, uh, Trump now because I was going to vote for Clinton, but I saw this Facebook ad where there's, you know, uh, some absurd thing taking place and it changed my mind. But if you have zero online presence, which is what Biden has, you have zero charisma. Biden has zero charisma, zero online presence, zero ability to fundraise, zero ability to, um, I don't know, even like, let's say, you know, you have baseball stadiums filled. He wouldn't even fill a library, a Biden. So they're obviously not going with him. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. Subscribe to H.A. Goodman's other channel. And... Um, if you want to support my voice long term, my Patreon is below. And thank you very, very, very much to the, my new Patreons. Your support means a great deal to me, uh, especially in this time. Thank you. Um, give me your thoughts, everybody. 240 million to 26.2 million. 240 million to 26.2 million. Is there anything wrong with this picture? Is there anything wrong with this picture? Is this what's really happening? You say, well, I don't see any evidence, Clinton. At the nomination in August... At the Democratic Convention, that's when they, they pull the switcheroo, or maybe before then. But Clinton will be nominee. She will be the nominee. Give me your thoughts below. Thank you.